Imagine with me now that the planet Jupiter you see right over here is in conjunction with the moon. And at the same time, a jet aircraft goes across the surface of the moon in this transit in the night sky. Now, there's only one person on the planet Earth who could capture this moment as well as you see here, and that's Greg Gibbs. Greg is an amazing nighttime photographer, and you can check out some of his work here on Facebook as well as his web pages, as you see here. You can take a look at some of his amazing nighttime photography at this location. Okay, back to my movie. In this project, I'm going to create this animation, and I'm going to take you directly to the key focus of this tutorial, which is about exporting this animation as an animated GIF. Okay, our story begins here in Adobe Bridge with Greg's original images. As I go through each one of these images, you can see the animation. My first step, of course, is to select all of these images, and I'm going up here to the Tools menu, and I go right down here to Photoshop and over to Load Files into Photoshop Layers. Now, I've done this already, so I'm going to switch right over to, of course, Photoshop right here, where you can see my images imported in. Now, I want to briefly discuss some tips and techniques for creating this animation and, of course, move quickly to the focus of this tutorial, which is about the export settings. But there are a few things here you need to know. The first of the things you need to know is right up here at the top. My topmost image is actually a frozen master image of the moon. And if I hold down my Option key and click on the visibility setting, this eye right here, I can then focus in and see a master frame right on the top with a transparent window through to my animation. Now, why did I do this? I did this because there were changes and movement in the moon that was caused by the atmosphere when Greg took his pictures. And I wanted to reduce the amount of movement of the moon and focus the movement only where the jet crosses in front of the moon. So that's why I created this topmost layer that freezes the moon and only lets the animation show through. So when I turn on the additional layers, as you see here, you can start to see the jet coming through and it reduces this down to have the least amount of movement around the jet. There's one other thing I did. If I select one of my layers, notice that I set this to a mode of darken right here. Now that, in addition to the mask, only will allow the darkest pixels to change as each frame of animation is added to this sequence, as you see here. So the darkest pixel, of course, is the plane and the jet trail coming out from behind the plane. So as I move to each frame, it's only going to change those areas which are darker than the surrounding moon. So again, isolating the movement within this project. So those are a couple tips and techniques that I used for this process, and I thought you should know those. Before I move on and complete this project, there's a couple other things right down here at the base I'd like to point out. Notice that I set the timing for each one of these frames to 0.3 seconds. I chose that because it seemed to look the best for this project. Over here, also notice that I set my animation to play forever and repeat the animation over and over again. I need to set those up before I go to my export setting. Okay, now we're ready to get right into the focus of this tutorial, and that's about using the Save for Web feature right here under the File menu. I'm going to select it, and then we'll go right into the Save for Web dialog. I'm going to go through a step-by-step -step process to show you some of my favorite tips and techniques for exporting an image like this. To begin with, our image is a little bit too large. Right over here, under Image Size, I'm going to select the width here and drop it down to 600. Because the width and height are linked, it will automatically change the height for me. I'm going to select the Enter key now. It will then reprocess my current image 
down to this 600 pixels, as you see here. Next, right over here, under quality, I'm going to select by cubic sharper. I like to use this setting for a project like this because it's going to maintain the quality and sharpness of my craters in this image. Now, let's move right up here, here in the upper left hand corner, and shift this from optimized to two up. This is going to help us compare the original image here on the left with my new GIF image here on the right. Okay, let's now look right over here and take a look at these settings. The first one you should start with, of course, is the colors you see up here. I currently have 256 colors being used in the table you see here below to define this image. Also, notice that the current size is 184.9K. So our goal is to create a nice small GIF image but also maintain the quality of this GIF image. There'll be some times when you're looking for quality and you don't care about the size, but there may be other times where you have a limited amount of size that you need to work within, so you need to balance the quality versus size. The colors that are being created in this project, as you see here, are being created with the adaptive palette right up here. One of the things I like to do is to experiment and try each one of these palettes, but one of my favorites for a project like this is the adaptive palette. But do run experiments. I'm going to leave that right where it is. Now let's go back over to the number of colors, because that's where we need to start. It's currently at 256, but let's drop this way down to 8, and let's take a look at this with 8 colors. Okay, we're looking at that. It looks ugly. The GIF size is 70.52K, that's really small, but I'm not going to allow this one to go onto the web, it's just too ugly. So we're going to move up in the number of colors that we're going to use in our project. We're going to slowly move up until which time we find a setting that looks good. 16, not enough. 32, getting closer but I think we can go all the way up to 64 right here and have a pretty good looking image. If I compare these side by side, it's really, really close. I can live with this number of colors. Noticing my file size is about 110.9K. That's pretty good. And of course, the size of this file would determine how quickly it displays on your web page. Back over here to the left, I can determine the dithering algorithm. How will these colors be dithered within the document to give us additional tones within the image? Now, in this particular case, my dithering is set to diffusion right here. When diffusion is selected, you also have the ability to determine the amount of dithering over here to the right. When I use diffusion, I typically do not use 100%. I'm going to drop this down, in this case, down to around 30%. Let's take a look at the file size change down here. It went from 110 down to 89.89. Pretty good. The quality still looks good here on the image. This would be actually a good setting. But let's try something else. Under diffusion here, I'm going to try pattern. Let's see what happens this time. Now when you select pattern, and it reprocesses the image, notice there's no ability to adjust the dithering. We're now up to around 108K. Let's now try noise. In some cases, I really like the noise algorithm because it scatters the image in a way that gives you the illusion, which I think, that you have more colors when in fact you're using fewer colors. This noisy pattern has no distinct patterning to it it's random bits of noise which scatter your color. Notice that my file size did go up to 111.7, but I don't think that's significant enough of a change that would make me try anything else. So in this particular case, I actually think I like adaptive with the noise algorithm at 64 colors. 
it looks just great to me. One other thing here under transparency. Check this out. My current size is 111.7. If I turn transparency off in this particular case, it's going to increase the size almost three times. In most cases, you're using transparency when you have an image floating against transparency and you want to place it into your web page where it shows the background of your web page showing through. In this particular case, I want this against black, so I'm going to leave this exactly as it is and, of course, keep my file size down. Moving on, right down here, I'm going to make sure I convert my image to sRGB. I'm doing this so that my image will display correctly on different devices, under different browsers. Typically, this is a really good thing to do. Next, right down here, notice that my metadata is set to copyright and contact information. I think that's an important thing to include in your document when putting something on the web. If you select none, by the way, it will reduce the file size, but I don't think that's worth it because I want my copyrights to appear with this project. So these are the settings that I would choose for a project like this. Now that we have the settings exactly the way we want them, let's go right over here and select Preview, here in the lower left-hand corner. The Preview will then take all these settings, display them for us here inside of our favorite web browser. There it is. Once we've previewed this, let's go right back over to our project and finish this off by selecting Save right here at the base. Once we select Save, we can target a folder and choose the format in which we want to save these in. You can choose images only, or you can bind them and connect them to an HTML file as you see here. In this case, we're going to place them onto Greg's page directly, so we need images only. We select Save, and we're all done. There you have it. You've seen the process of moving images from Adobe Bridge into Photoshop, turning it into an animation, adding some special techniques I've shown you, and then exporting it using some of my favorite settings in Save for Web. Give it a try.